Good morning. What a beautiful day to be together and raise our voices to God in song and to remember our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> As I start this lesson, I would like you to think of three words, responsibilities that we have as Christians. And uh, the title of this lesson is A Day in the Life of Christ. And with the passage that James read for us, we can see the word service in that. And as Jeff gave us uh, three words in Ephesians, he had the S words, and actually these three words also are S's that would, I would like to keep, have you keep in mind as we go through this lesson. Service is one, of course, in Matthew chapter 5, passage that we're very familiar with, Matthew 5, 13 through 16, about being the salt. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how will it be made salty again? It is good for nothing anymore except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, and you set, a hill, set on the hillside not to be hidden, nor do you light a lamp and put it under a peck measure, but the lamp, but on a lampstand, and it gives to the light all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men, so that uh, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see our good works and glorify your Father who is in God. You can't figure out the other two words: shine and season. If you remember that lesson we had with uh, Alan Malone a year ago, and he talked about salt and what salt is used for, preserving, influencing, and that is uh, the other word, season, to influence other people. So as we go through this lesson, remember, we need to shine, we need to um, season, and serve. So, again, the title of the lesson is A Day in the Life of Christ. So we're going to start right off with the alarm going off. You wake up, are you one of those that maybe has to hit the snooze button four or five times you know, and just consider what I've got to face in, our in, my, in this daily challenge? Or are you one to hit the alarm, wake up, and you're off and running? Um, and I'm, I'm not going to be judgmental with anybody. I'm one, hit the alarm, and I'm pretty well good to go out of bed. Um, I do have a second alarm on my watch, which, and I would recommend having the attitude, the alarm goes off. Think thankful things. Thankful that I've got another day to live. Thankful that I've got this bed, this wife, this house, the freedom to live. And just having that, making that choice of having a good day, being thankful is going to start your day off in the right way. If you, you know, just dread getting up and having to face the things we have to face today, is it's not going to make your day very well. So wake up, be thankful. Again, in prayer to God, be thankful for all He's given us. Second thing is, how about? Of course, we all think of what we're going to have for breakfast. How about you feed upon God's Word, first and foremost? And I would recommend um, reading from the Gospels. If you can first think about what Jesus did for you and what I've got to face through the rest of the day, you're going to be able to accomplish, you know, if you realize what Jesus has done. He came to this world... In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was the beginning with God. And all things came into being by Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that He has come into being. Verse 14 of John, John 1, And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and beheld His glory, the glory of as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so I would recommend, again, looking at what the example that Jesus has given us. 
from day one, you know, from the first first thoughts into our mind. And so again, that will help us accomplish the things that we have we have um, got to face us. And even just the the minute things, you're done. You're done eating breakfast. You're ready to go off to work. How about um, young people? You're off to school. Do your parents give you chores to do before you're off to off to school or um, daily accomplishments? And I'll even adults, husband, wife. You, you clean up after yourself, or you just leave things for. You know, in my case, my wife to clean up after me. No, you, those little things again, shining, serving, seizing, making an influence. So we're off to work, and then how about that drive to um, drive to work? That's that will be a challenge for your self control sometimes. I've got that drive up to Indianapolis, and my wife considers me to be an aggressive driver, and that is one thing that I have got to work on. And I use the excuse, well, I'm driving up in Indianapolis, and you've got to do this. You, get, that's, you, can't, you can't use that as an excuse. I can get angry at a driver and not sin, as we're told. So, again, self-control in facing the things. I know... Even probably some of this, you know, we get frustrated with people going through, you know, the lights that, uh, here in town. And again, practice self-control. Um, arriving at work. Are you one to, okay, starting time is 8 o'clock. Are you one to show up 8 o'clock? Or are you one to show up 5, 10 minutes early and get those things done that, you know, maybe it's not work, your cup of coffee, or your, the cooler talk, or whatever, where you win. Um, again, show up right at 8 o'clock. We've got a saying at work that you're supposed to work from buzzer to buzzer. You know, it's from 8 o'clock. Are you already ready to go to work at that start time? Again, that's a way of shining, a way of serving. A way of being that influence that you are on your on the coworkers, um, and how are you at work? Um, you have to be looked over. Proverbs chapter six talks about um, the ant. Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs six in verse six beginning it says. Go to the end, O sluggard, observe her ways, be wise, which have no chief, no officer or ruler, prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provisions in the harvest. How long will it you lie down, O sluggard? Are you one that needs to be watched over? Or do you have a supervisor that doesn't have to worry about telling you what needs to be done? You've got the initiative to go find the work that you've done, or if it is before you, you are not have to be told, okay, here's the deadline, let's get moving, let's be motivated, be self-motivated as the ant, not having to be told what they need to do. And that attitude of, um, that we read of in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10, that we need to do the best we can, whatever you do, do the best. Colossians chapter... In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. Whatever you do, do you, do you work heartily as for the Lord rather than to men? Know that from the Lord you will serve the reward of your inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Don't try, I mean, it is an attitude, you know, to be positive and to try and better yourself, maybe move up the corporate ladder. But we need to realize that it is God who, who we are serving and that those, again, those co-workers around us will see that we're not working just to make that buck and make my life more comfortable, but I'm doing it because God has blessed me with the abilities I have to perform the, the, these jobs and, and these, these tasks. And again, you see this example in, in other people. Uh, I use this real-life example of 
there was a fellow that I saw around work. I didn't work in his department, but he was in a supervisor's position. And I saw how he dealt with his um, co-workers, those that were under him. And when I see him through the hallway, he always had a great attitude, talking to people. I go to a meeting over on the east side, um, I think it was west side, uh, Church of Christ in Kentucky Avenue. I don't think they know, they're no longer there, but um, I see this fella. His name was Terry, and I said, he worked at Rolls Royce. And I said, I knew there was something about you. Just the way that you, you know, dealt with the situations that I saw you deal with, that you were, and he says, yeah, I, I, I saw something in you also, that realizing that you are a Christian, you are somebody that has the priority of serving God. What kind of a reputation do you have at work? Are you one to nitpick and I maybe why that I'm somewhat patient with some things because I've got somebody that I work with and it's it's usually it's his way and there are various different ways of performing a job but it's always okay it's got to be done this way even if the, you accomplish your task are you one to nitpick and find fault with you know well that's not really the way I do it you know that's not really if accomplishes job how about maybe consider that this person maybe doesn't have the confidence in, in, so how about encouraging them and saying, well, yeah, that's a good way to get that thing done. And again, build people up. And that's, again, what our responsibility is to do. Shine and, and be compassionate and just influencing for good. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1 tells us a good name is better than a good ointment. And once you lose that re good reputation, it's pretty hard to gain that back after you've, you know, grilled somebody, you know. So let's consider that. At the workplace, when it comes time for lunch, use your time wisely. I think that's a good opportunity. Maybe to pull up that text that we get on Monday morning and see who we need to pray for. Um, maybe a call or even a text. It doesn't take that long to do that. Um, I would also recommend getting your, Bible, getting your Bible out. And I say getting a physical Bible out only because somebody will be able to see that you are reading from God's Word. If you got your phone or your tablet or whatever, you be, figure that you're scrolling. Whatever, what does everybody else do? Scroll through, you know, their Facebook page or whatever it is. But if you've got your Bible out, and I've had various different people come to me and comment about why I've got my Bible out and I'm reading, and it leads to a conversation and the way to where we can. Speak of our Lord and Savior. So use your time wisely. Um, so when, it, when it's time to leave, we're, again, is it buzzer to buzzer? Are you, and it's, it's funny to see the, they still have, they still have a clock, the people we got a clock out at work, and the line starts to grow about 5, 10, 15 minutes before it's time to clock out. They're waiting in line just to clock out. Or are you one to put in that little extra time? You know, it doesn't matter if I've got to stay another five, ten minutes um, to get the job done. So, again, a way to influence other people. Drive home again is going to test your patience. <laughs> so make sure that, you know, you can influence. I've got... A fellow co I, I carpool every other week, and so I've got somebody in the car that sees my reaction to certain situations. So again, I try and be an influence um, on how I could, how I will react um, to certain situations. And that drive home also is a good time to maybe unwind, you know, frustrations from work, so you don't bring it home to your wife, to your kids, and just unload on them. Good time to 
again, meditate, pray, ask God for help, you know, to get through the situation you just went through to deal with it rightly, or make sure when I do get home and open that door to, to my household that I've got a right heart, and I'm considerate of, again, my wife and children. There would be a good time when you come home not to, again, unload, how about ask how their day is going, and not just say, and I've got to work on this much more because I'm not much of a communicator myself. Did you have a good day? Yes, no. How about, you know, a little more explicit? Um, how did, you know, did this situation work out? Or, uh, again, consider, consider your mate, consider your children, ask them, if there, was there anything that happened in school that uh, you were, you, you know, that was funny or whatever it is, but make sure that we spend time and make sure that we show them, our loved ones in our household, that we are, that they are valuable to us. And that time is one of the most valuable items we have to show somebody how much we love them. And I know with the phones, <laughs> put them down maybe, you know. I. Eye contact with the person, not, okay, I'm having this conversation while I'm scrolling through my phone. And I, I would recommend dinner time, the phones go away. I've heard of that. There's a basket, you know, that the phones go in, and so we can have a conversation around the table. And I recall the boys coming home one day, and one of the teachers was asking them about, you know, how many of you sit around the dinner table? And there were only pro not even a handful of families that sat around the dinner table and had a conversation, sitting at the sitting on the couch watching TV or something else. Or you know, so feel blessed that you have you've got a family, and make sure that they know that you are thankful for that and communicate with them. Coming home also an example of when you've got toddlers. My wife was staying at home with the kids, and I think she was preparing a meal, and she needed something from Kroger. And, of course, I come home, and she needs something. So, yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead. She's like, no, let me go. I would like some adult conversation. I've been home with toddlers all day long. Again, and we, we laugh about, but consider that. Um, maybe she's, maybe your spouse has been home just all by herself. Again, nobody to talk to. Communicate. Show, show your love for them. Responsibilities at home. As husband, wife, father, mother, children, fathers, we know Many scriptures tell us, um, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, train up your child in the way that he should go, and he will not depart from it. Um, as we studied in Ephesians chapter 6, fathers are not to provoke their children, but to instruct them in the discipline of the Lord. We are responsible for teaching our children about God. It's not the church's responsibility. We to provide the spiritual food. Yes, it's an aid, but we need to make sure that that's not the only where the only place that they're going to hear the Bible spoken. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7, we have the example. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 5, and it says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and you shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Again, when you rise up right from the beginning of the day to you lie down right until you put your pillow on the head, that's the example our children also need to see or everybody needs to see. We put it into action. We show concern for others. We are talking to our neighbors 
about the Lord uh, helping them out in, in some way. But they need to see our love for the Lord, our love for his word, that we do study and read and meditate upon it. Um, not just sitting down with them, filling out the blanks on our Bible lesson. And again, that's, that's a challenge, learning what your children, how they learn. It's not always, you know, sit down and read the Bible to them, give them practical ways. And again, that's, that's a challenge. And um, we've got some teachers among us, and we're glad you use them as resources and a way to help to, um, to teach and and those as a spouse, God gave us a helpmate. So make sure that we show our young people that we value our helpmate very much so um, in considering their needs, maybe the hobbies or whatever. Uh, maybe it's not your favorite thing to do, but just be able to spend time with your, your wife or your husband in ways which I'm thankful that my wife is, enjoys watching sports and <laughs> it wasn't too hard. But there are other things that we still we sacrifice. Again, serve other people. As we read the Gospels, you know, one passage, again, from the morning, we don't have to read a whole chapter. We just need to read something that Jesus has done. A miracle he performed. He showed compassion. Okay, show that compassion to your wife. The sacrifice, you know, show that sacrifice to your children. Um, but yeah, just having that in your mind right from the beginning, okay, what has Christ done for me? I'm going to do that throughout the day. Um, husbands, again, the, we've studied through Ephesians chapter 5, sacrifice as Christ sacrificed for the church. Love your spouse as you love your body. You, you're going to take care of your body, take care of your wife. Um, wife, be trustworthy, as we read in Proverbs, the 31st chapter, um, the virtuous woman. Um, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 10, an excellent wife who can find for her worth is above the jewels, the heart of her, the heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of his life. Wives, be trustworthy. Um, be a help again. Be a helpmate to your husband. Don't be that continual dripping that we read of, and and again we. We somewhat make fun of this. Um, uh, Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 20, no, verse 13 and 14. Um, Fourteen and fifteen, excuse me, uh, where it says, A house of wealth is um, Go back, thirteen verse thirteen. A foolish son is the uh, destruction of his father, and a conten uh, the contentions of a wife are a constant dripping. Um, house of wealth or inheritance from the father, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Wives, surely get your point across where you would like for your husband to improve, but don't continually to nag again. It's like a dripping. You're probably going to make it worse if you continue on and continue on. So husbands, receive the correction um, again and be receptive to that. Other responsibilities we have is to serve, um, serve, season, and shine about our responsibilities to our other Christians, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Matthew 19, verse 29, it tells us about having the blessing of having 
all these brothers and sisters in Christ who have left their homes, or left their houses, maybe left family. But we are so blessed to have many more brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to be encouraging them, not just on Sunday morning and Wednesday. And that's why we do need to get together. We need to spend time in their homes. We need to have them spend time in our homes. And that's when we get to know what their needs are, when maybe not as obvious as them coming to us and showing us or asking us for a need, but we can see that in them. We, we are close enough to them to see that. And maybe having singings and prayer meetings in our homes. I think we've kind of fallen short in that in, a while, in quite a while. But being together as brothers and sisters, that's what we need to do, influence season. Um, again, we've got the new directory. We can't fault that we don't have that, um, that list of who to write letters to. I know we've got many of the, the widows that do that. The elderly ladies will write letters of encouragement, and we're so thankful for that. Visits. And I know, again, it, this may not be in a work day. We've got our days off, or maybe even some days we work in part time. Go visit some of the elderly, the shut ins. What a joy it is to, to sit down with an elderly couple who've been married 70 years and just to see the way they communicate and talk to each other. Um, Oh, I'm trying to, I had this name, there, there was a couple that we used, I used to always go visit, and they would finish each other's sentence, and it's so pleasant to be around that type of experience and wisdom, and you'd be surprised that even visiting with them, that you're not the only one visiting, other people are encouraging them, and so that's a good thing to do. Um, and actually, I want to back up and, and mention this also to, and I told Calvin I was going to preach to him, but as retirees, I want so many people who don't have that daily grind, you know, that daily, you got to get up in the morning. What is your day filled with? Do you, yes, I'm looking forward to, in hopefully a year or two, the Lord willing, that I may have that time to spend, again, more so shining, serving, and seasoning. Sure, there's things that I need to do. There's uh, things to do as it's growing. But is that going to be my priority? We need to make sure that we make time for, again, being a Christian. We do not retire being a Christian. It's right until we're put in the grave and is when we finally, you know, give up the res or complete the responsibilities as a brother and sister in Christ. And then our ultimately our responsibility to influence the lost. That's why Jesus came. Seek and save the lost. Read from the gospel. See how he did it. We have responsibility to do that, ultimately. So, as we end our day and we pillow our head, do we have the attitude of David in Psalms chapter 63 and verse 6 where he meditated upon him when he was while in bed, which I remember thee on my bed. And you pillow your head, are you going to sleep well because you have fulfilled those responsibilities to shine, season, and serve? Are you going to Communicate to God you are thankful that you've given, he's given me these responsibilities, that he's given, gotten me through the tribulations or struggles that I have this day. And we will sleep better if we have done that. So hopefully this has been an edifying and encouraging lesson to realize we do have responsibility. And it, again, it is 24 hours, seven days a week, responsibility 
no matter what we're faced with. And we're able to, we're, we are able, we've got to have the, the, the faith and trust in God that we are able to face whatever he's put before us. So if there's anyone here that needs to render the initial obedience, that they do believe that Jesus came, suffered on the cross, died so that he can, you can have your sins forgiven, cleared of your conscience, and who's willing to serve, season, and shine the rest of their life. If there's anyone here who needs the encouragement of the saints, maybe it's fallen short, would um, encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing.